All right, here we are again. I just got off the phone with a dear friend of mine up in Minnesota. And um, he got finished talking to, I think the pastor's name is uh, Rain Wind or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, he says, hey, hey, Pastor Dow, check this out. A long time, no, no, no here. No, you know, it's been a long time. I called my friend, talked to him. I said, go ahead, my brother's good hearing from you. He said, Pastor, check this out. He says that, um, I thought I had fellowship up here with an Indian tribe. They keep the Sabbath. I said, they do what? He said, they keep the Sabbath. I said, oh, that's pretty good. They eat clean foods, dietary law. I said, wow. Keep the feast. I said, really? Yeah, yeah. And um, I said, so, I mean, go check them out. He says, well, I talked with the pastor and the pastor. You know, I told him that um, I have two wives. He says he's going to go and pray and see what the Ruach says. Now, for those of you who don't know who the Ruach is, that is the Hebrew expression um, for the European English word, Holy Spirit. So, Bud didn't hear nothing back from him. So he says, okay. He calls him up. Say, hey, Pastor, I just wanted to hear what the Ruach had to say. He says, well, I, I went to the board of elders. I go, oh, boy. Let me see. You go to the usher board, the deacon board, and the ironing board for the answer. And the hell with the Ruach, right? That's pretty much where it is in religion. Is that the Holy Spirit has been kicked out of churches a long, long time ago. I said, so what did he tell you? He says, well, the elder board said, you mean the ironing board? Yeah, the, well, the elder board said that, you know, we, we're not going to entertain that type of fellowship at this time. I said, is there a reason why? They give you a reason why? No. Nope. He just said he's not going to debate with me over this issue. I said, what is the issue? You know, it's sad. In all these churches, you have sodomites. You have adulterers. You have pastors who have been married more than once, twice, three, four, five times. And they're prophets, they're pastors, they're bishops. They're breaking all the qualifications. You got women preaching and teaching and carrying on. You, you got folks just, I mean, it's just, it's a zoo going on out there. As soon as a man comes doing exactly what Father Abraham, doing exactly what the great prophet Moses and King David, who we all say we love them, at least we say we do in word. As soon as a man practices biblical marriage, now all of a sudden we, we can't have that. Let me, let me tell y'all something. All y'all people that are in polygamous relationship, not the LDS, no, 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 I'm talking about genuine Israelite biblical marriage and you don't have a church home. That's what y'all call it out there. You're welcome in the ministries of Straightway. I've met some of you and every single one of you if I've met, you've been nothing but beautiful, honorable people. And I would love to have y'all to be a part of our assemblies because the character that y'all bring and the dedication that y'all bring and the spirit that y'all bring is just literally off the chain. Y'all will put any Christian that I have ever met to shame. And you're welcome over here. But you're not, you, you got to understand, anytime you are obeying the Bible, you're not welcome. You got to understand. Y'all get, get that through your thick heads. Churches, organizations, and stuff like this that are religious, they don't want law-abiding people. They don't want people who obey the Bible. I got a headmaster of a school up there in the Presbyterian church up there. I'm waiting to see if he bites off on this debate because I put an open challenge out to him. And everybody wants to um, talk about the husband of one wife. That's what they say. And as soon as I go behind the English words and go into the etymology of the words and they saying the Greek words, they still, you know, these people are just argumentative. They don't care about truth. If they can't keep the Sabbath, if they can't keep the dietary laws, if they can't even keep the law to obey it, what makes you think they're going to obey anything the book says? Let me give y'all a, I'm going to give y'all a bonus out there, okay? A list of qualifications is not the time to be introducing new laws that has never, ever, ever been spoken about. So, 
what we need to do is go behind those words and find out what pensmanship the scribes, the people who changed the Bible, changed the words in it, because the Europeans have done that. They have put pensmanship to it. And they have given a stroke of the pen and they have changed the meaning of a lot of texts. That's why the Bible says the way you cover yourself is your study. So these people think that Paul writing a letter to a disciple changes the laws, changes the scope of everything. What kind of attitude is that? So if I, okay, Paul was an apostle, okay? So I'm a pastor who the most high, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ has appeared to me twice, all right? So if I start writing letters and stuff, is my letter more valid than the law that is already established? Yes or no? I mean, can I put down me a, a book, an epistle to the letter of Bud to give you instructions on how to ordain elders and the way that the assemblies ought to run. Does my letter trump the law? Good question, huh? That's why people make the mistake. However, if I write a letter and I quote the law in my letter, I'm not introducing new laws, new legislation. I'm not introducing nothing new. I'm just repeating and defending that which has been of old. I know that's too complex for some of you. Um, then uh, I had that same preacher said, "Well, I'm gonna eat pig, yo. You got me. Hey, you got me all wrong. I think you Christians ought to baptize yourself in swine. I think y'all to immerse yourself, drink its blood, uh, eat, eat blood pudding, eat all the unclean stuff you're supposed to be. Because if we was in the land and if something died on the road, I'd give it to you. You go and eat it because you're a Gentile. Go ahead. But it is amazing when you go over into the book of Acts and if Yah wasn't so concerned God wasn't so concerned about people uh, especially new converts Gentile strangers aliens and foreigners coming in why would he tell you to abstain from things strangled from blood so there is some laws out there you see I think we have a misconception of what law is out here I'm sitting out here in the public right now it has laws there's a speed limit law there's a law to regulate moral behavior character and conduct out here and I have to obey those laws. If I don't, there's penalties, fines that'll be levied or assessed against me or possible jail time. But when we get over here in Yah, all of a sudden we don't have to obey no laws. What kind of logic is that? I'll give you an example. They, this is how confused Christians are today. They'll say, well, God gave us some new laws. I said, really? Matter of fact, Bud mentioned this to me. He says, um, he said, God gave us new laws. Bud said, good, I like hearing new laws. Tell me, which one are they? Uh, love God. He says, oh, that's a good law. I like that law. It's all, but it's already said that from the beginning. Jesus said it too. The apostle said it too. So how is that new to love God? I mean, I don't get it. Um, but anyway, let's just go along with your line of thinking. If we're going to love God, how do you do it? How do you love God? I mean, after all, you've got laws, don't you? And of course, they say, well, that, 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 got them every time. And, they, and then Bud says to the person, didn't the Bible say also say love your neighbor? Yeah, he said, okay, so how do you love your neighbor then? Because there has to be a law to teach us how to love the neighbor. I mean, it's just not abstract, is it? It's just not because we choose to look at something and allow our little heart to go out and we go, ooh, oh, I just love you. Is that what love is? Is that what love is? Or is there something written in the Bible that tells us how to love? Can I tell you what Jesus said if you'll be satisfied on it? But y'all know you're going to argue with it. Jesus said in John 14, 15, get your Bible and go open it up and put it up on your phone right here and see if I'm quoting it just right. Matter of fact, I'll go verbatim. Jesus said in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. What, what you mean? He's got commandments? A, a command? Command? You mean to tell me that the creator, the universe, the most high, the Messiah, commands us? Oh, man. See, Christians ain't going to have that. They ain't going to have that. They want a God that's form and fashion after them, and that's just all there's to it. But stop going to these satanic Christian churches. They don't obey y'all. They obey the elder board. The, the, the Ruach is the elder board. <laughs> the usher board, the deacon board, and the iron board. <laughs> anyway, I got to go. I got to put this seatbelt on, get back to concentrate on this roll. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>